Today on Locked On Red Wings, Detroit stays largely quiet at the deadline, trading just Clem Costin to San Jose. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ news radio podcast. Well, Scotty's a host over at the Lockdown Tigers podcast and a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. Did I say that wrong? No, you got it right. You just said it weird. You've never said was, it like that before. <laughs> I was I was multitasking here on the screen, and I like thinking back. I'm like, I said that weird, but I wasn't sure if I said it wrong. No, no you nailed it. Just weird cadence. That's all. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah. So, apologies for the late Friday episode, but we wanted to make sure we had time to give the trade deadline a full recap that it deserved. We expected a little bit more, like probably many of you did at the deadline. Uh, but at the same time, I'm, we're not too surprised that not much happened. Yeah, no, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, there's, there was a lot of, I think, telling moments in the Iserman presser, which I'm sure we will talk plenty about. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I feel like this was a kind of an odd deadline in terms of what was available. You either had kind of clear cut, top end talent or you had more of uh for lack of a better term depth talent uh that was kind of flying around and the Iserman flat out said it at one point in the presser and he was like yeah I think when it comes to depth they would rather just add what they have in Grand Rapids and you know when it came to the uh the top end talent they felt like the price tag was too high so what does that leave you with not a whole lot of moves. Uh, yeah. well, obviously, we'll talk about the one move that the Wings did make. I think that that one honestly has more to do with GR than it does, <laughs> uh, at, you know, clean costing or, or the NHL level as well. But um, yeah, I, I think this was a, a deadline that, again, where the players available were kind of uh, in, a, in a weird dynamic, I guess is what I'll say. And um, as far as, uh, what the wings did, it's, it's not my favorite outcome in the world. I'm not exactly thrilled, but, uh, I do think that they will add internally and reinforcements will still come just not via trade. Yeah. So obviously I'm bummed from the standpoint of root for radio. Like I wanted plays, I wanted moves. I wanted to bolster the roster to make this team better and ensure they make the playoffs. But well, we talked about it, Scotty, like a month ago, right? Uh, that this team more than likely is in a position to either soft buy or stand pat. Well, then their heater turned into a mega heater and they won six games straight. So we started to buy in a little bit more before getting humbled in three straight here. But I mean, in the end, what we expected to happen is exactly what happened. And while it's not the most exciting outcome and you're allowed to feel bummed, I don't think it's the wrong outcome either. There is one little wrinkle in my argument that I'll fully admit here in a second. But I mean, this Red Wings team, the way it is, like they're not in a position to buy like pieces or big time rentals uh, outside of. I mean, I know if you're going to get a guy like Hannafin or Gensel, like it would have been on a on a extension basis right like you don't yeah, want if that to wasn't spend... on the table right we're not in those rooms right and like, we, we you don't can know. Ass- if, if, if you know we can say all we want like oh we should have made that move and then extended them it's really easy to to you know write that out or, or, or say that you know on camera for the world and and you know have people to be like yeah but like it takes two to tango and if he if, if he wanted mm-hmm. to hit free agency if either of them any of them of these rentals wanted to hit free agency and test their market then you know, that, that that's that they obviously have uh, every right to do that. And that really limits what the wings and what I would imagine most teams would be willing to give up to get them. Well, and exactly that, though, right? Like if there was an extension on the table, don't you think Carolina, who acquired Gensel or Vegas, who we got to talk about Vegas because they play them tomorrow, uh, who acquired Hannafin? would have immediately signed those guys to extensions if possible. Like clearly the extension wasn't on the table. And then do you really want to sell assets this season with a team that's not poised, even with an, a Gensel or even with a Hannafin doesn't have the makeup of a roster that's poised to be a Stanley cup contenders. You really want to sell assets to acquire a rental like that, 
of that caliber this year. And that's why I have no qualms with the Stan Pat method. Is it the sexy method? No. But this team, as it's constructed right now, has earned their way to the first wild card. I know that gap is is small now. Uh, you're still tied for the first wild card with Tampa. You got the Islanders just two points behind now. But the Red Wings have played their way into a position where they've earned the opportunity to try and make the playoffs. Now, if they fall short, they fall short. But Steve Eiserman looks at this roster and says, you guys have earned the opportunity to try and make the playoffs on your own. So I think not selling is still a massive win for this organization. For the first time since 2017, the Red Wings have not sold at the trade deadline. And I don't want to people to miss the forest for the trees, right? Like this is still an up and coming team with a ton in the cabinet and plenty of cap space. And this Red Wings team is for the first time in that process of a rebuild with all that going on, not selling at the deadline. And they're given the opportunity to make the playoffs on their own merits. And this, 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 this is the core that got themselves in this position. So it's not as if now today with tonight with the Arizona Coyotes and tomorrow with the Vegas Golden Knights, and that's a tough matchup tomorrow, but it's not like now the season's over because they didn't buy. In fact, it's the other way around. Because Steve Eiserman didn't sell, it's proving that he has faith in this roster to play important games down the stretch, and that's something that he did not have in this team a year ago. Yeah, I... Selling was just like never going to happen again. Like we talked about this earlier this week. We talked about it a month ago. We, we've been all over, you know, what direction the wings were going to head in this deadline. And we have been very, very firm on like the, selling was just always kind of a ridiculous notion. And I'm not really sure where that narrative really even stemmed from that. That was just always like they're in the first wild card. Like that's preposterous. That, that was, that was never going to happen. And so, well, yeah. where it came from is they lost three straight right before the deadline. Yeah, people, yeah, yeah. People started I, to get a little we nervous. We talked about that off air. Yeah. Like, yeah, it came from people thinking that what happened this year before the deadline was the exact same as what happened last year, and that's just not true. But, um, you know, and, and this isn't like, a, again, this isn't a, a planting of the flag. Like, they're definitely going to make the playoffs. But there's a difference between deciding to sell and, you know, guaranteeing a postseason. That, that's a, It's a fine line, but there's a difference between – those things. And, and I think Iserman throughout this entire rebuild has always had the eye on the future and the assets that he has toward the future uh, really consistently throughout. And, and I think that this deadline is another example of that, right? Like what I said at the beginning of the show, really, I think is where my mindset kind of is with this. It was, do you want, to, is it worth it to give up assets for a top end, top end player that obviously would make your NHL team better, but you'd be getting rid of, you know, X amount of assets for the future. And are the depth pieces and depth is almost like some people view depth as like a derogatory term. And it's, not, it's not, you know, is the, is, if there's a middle six or bottom six player out there that we could have brought in as well, are those players better than Anybody we can call up from GR plus the assets we would have had to give up to acquire them, obviously. Yes. And I think when it comes to the depth pieces, the answer is unequivocally no. I, I don't think that there was a a, a middle, a middle, uh, bottom six forward and, and maybe bottom four defensemen that were going to be significantly more valuable than Berger plus what we would have had to give up to get the player and Edvinson plus what we would have had to give up to get the player both of those. And so I, I think, again, I think the only thing to really feel like you missed out on was maybe taking a huge swing uh, at the end of the day. And getting Thomas Hurdle. Uh, <laughs> I hate the Vegas Golden Knights. I respect them, but I hate them. Um, the wrinkle to this argument, though, and I will fully admit it, is the fact that this was a buyer's market and a lot of the prices for a lot of these players was not that much. The Thomas Hurdle trade, which I'm just talking about right, right. now. I mean, granted, well, again, we Hurdle comes with a team long... Control. Team control determines a lot of that, too, as we've talked about. Well, well. and Hurdle didn't want to leave San Jose. He had to yeah. waive his no-movement clause. He signed a contract. He had seven more years, and they got him for a first, a former first-round pick. And then they got two thirds back, including some salary retention. I know part of that, that depreciation 
of value is because of the fact that hurdles got a little bit of injury history going on right now, but he's still a very good hockey player. Noah Hannafin went for very little. Anthony Mantha went for very little. Like the, that's the one wrinkle to this argument is that a lot of these guys that did get traded this year were traded for next to nothing. Nobody gave up big name prospects. Very, very few teams gave up like first round picks this season. The ones they did give up granted they're winning teams are going to be late first and they're in a buy window. So like, that's the wrinkle to the argument is Iserman probably could have bought and added to this team for this season and not given up a lot of draft picks. But at the same time, I don't disagree with the mindset that this team with where they're at is likely, you know, better off just standing pat because unless you make a blockbuster trade for a guy like a Thomas hurdle or a, a Gensel plus extension, and that's that that's the hook, right? The plus extension trading for a guy now, for the rest of this season while giving up assets isn't good for the long-term sustainability of this team. Making the playoffs is important. And we'll talk about that, but Eiserman's giving the team as is the opportunity to do that. He's letting them play important games. So it's not like because they didn't buy, they're not going to try and make the playoffs. That's still the goal. And Eiserman said that during the presser too. So uh, we got to go to a quick break, Scotty. And when we return, we'll talk about the one trade they did make as well as kind of get a little bit more in depth in the comments before previewing this weekend's games. So stay tuned to Locked on Red Wings. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-catered, chef-crafted rather, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and ready and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started and get after your goals. Fuel up fast with fast restaurant quality meals using two-minute meals that are ready to eat whenever you are. And pancakes, smoothies, and more are available with Factory by discovering a wide variety of easy options for the entire day like breakfast, midday bites, and more. They're flexible with your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule deliveries at any time. But you can sign up and save, and they've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash LockedOnNHL and use code LockedOnNHL50 for 50% off. That's code LockedOnNHL50 at factormeals.com slash Locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off. Segment two, Locked on Red Wings podcast. Scotty, there was one trade the Red Wings made, and I saw it, and at first I was like, thank God there's a trade. I can finally use my new my new graphic. I was very excited about that. Yeah, you texted uh, me, bang, in all caps, and then finally, and I went, oh my goodness, we made a huge trade, and this is what it was, so... Thank you for texting me that it worked. That was, <laughs> I was, really, that was really, really great. I was just excited to get use everybody the pumped up in the press box. <laughs> oh, we made a big trade. And everybody's like, dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was just excited to use this graphic. Look how pretty it is. That's awesome. Oh, uh, uh, so yeah, the Red Wings traded Gleam Costin to the San Jose Sharks in return for defenseman Radim Shemek. I believe it's she. Um, I could be pronouncing that wrong still, but I'm trying my best. And a 2024 seventh round pick. Uh, it's New Jersey's originally. I believe they acquired that pick in the uh, was it Timo Meyer deal last uh, trade deadline the year prior. So yeah, I saw this deal, and I'm not gonna lie. I, I went who? I had to Google him. He's played the entire season in the AHL. He was the San Jose Barracudas captain. He plays left side, so it's added defensive depth for the Grand Rapids Griffins. But I think that, that you, you know, you start, said at the start of the show that you think this has more to do with Grand Rapids. I actually disagree with that. I think that this has more to do with clearing cap space and giving Costin an opportunity to play than it does anything else. I mean, Clem costin has been in the press box the majority of this season. Uh, he hasn't played hardly at all. And when he does play, I'll be honest, he's usually a pretty big non-factor out there on the ice. Uh, so this is a change of scenery for clean Costin was another year left at $2 million. He's going to go to the San Jose sharks. We're going to offer him a much bigger opportunity to play. And, uh, we're Red Wings get added defensive depth. Yes. At grand Rapids, which does help for a team that's trying to make a playoff push and a guy who's a leader, right? Like he's a cat. He was the captain of the Barracuda, um, while shedding $2 million in salary, giving you a little extra flexibility in an off season where you're going to have to sign a lot of RFAs 
and maybe bring back and extend UFAs or bring in new guys. So that extra $2 million, I think that's really what this is about. It's just a little bit of extra flex- flexibility in a roster spot you weren't using. Yeah, I, I, I think to me, I think this is just burgers getting called up. That's my interpretation of this trade. I, I think the wings looked around and went well, and they talked about it in the presser too. I forget who asked the question. It was oh, Art they... Regner. Sorry, Art Regner of all people. Oh, was it Art? Okay, I yeah. love I love Art. He's got this great, uh, what's the word like rapport with Steve Eiserman and uh, everyone in the Detroit Red Wings media. But when he asked that question about Bergeron's like uh, waiver Four eligibility. I was like, whoa, that's not an art. That's not a question I'm used to from art. Like I'm, I'd expect that from Max. And I was like, props art. That was a, that was a really good question. Great question. Yeah. The, uh, so uh, to me, right. That's what this trade is all about. They looked at the roster and they said, well, if we're not going to trade for someone and Iserman also just flat out said, you know, multiple times that the goal for the wings is to make the postseason, and they're going to bring in their, you know, reinforcements internally if they have to. And so I think this is, okay, well, we didn't trade Berger, right? We we obviously, there was not a trade that formulated for him. Uh, There's not a trade that formulated for a middle six forward, a veteran, you know, middle six guy that uh, we can, we can plug in and improve our depth a little bit. So what does that leave us? Well, that leaves us to Berger is going to get some playing time at the NHL level, whether it's fourth line minutes, third line minutes, or what have you. Um, it's, it's, you know, pedal to the metal postseason uh, mindset. And how do you make the NHL team as good as possible? It, it's no longer uh, when, and now obviously development is still the long-term plan. That's why they didn't trade away the farm at the deadline, but um, your, the, the goal is to put the, the, the best uh, players in the organization at the NHL level now. And uh, no matter how many, you know, minutes and, and what have you, their role is going to be, um, and so this was a way to do that. This was a way to clear a roster spot so that it would make it significantly easier to add Berger. That is pretty much entirely what I view this as. If Berger doesn't end up playing, uh, doesn't get called up and isn't a Red Wing for a majority of the, you know, post trade deadline world, then, uh, you know, then, then I guess maybe I, I miss, re- I'm misreading the situation, but I I'm pretty confident in, in uh, the fact that this trade was made almost exclusively to uh, give a path for Berger to play NHL minutes. No, I mean, I, I think it's that is just as big of a as a, of a factor as is the things I brought up, right? Like the clearing cap space and yeah, giving you an clear opportunity a spot and you get two mil, you know, boom. Yeah. That's now, great. and it, it is fair great, to say, great job. It, it's fair to mention, you know, that uh, c Mac, who you brought in, is on a contract that's about around two million dollars, I believe, but it's the last year of that deal. Yeah. Uh, so that cap falls off, whereas you would have had Costin for another year. But I agree with you that, you know, this does pave the way. And he did mention, I guess we can, we can uh, kind of transition right into the press media availability after the we've trade been deadline. talking about it for all yeah. 20 minutes anyway. But yeah, yeah. Right. But like he, he specifically mentioned, right. That he felt that the depth when looking at the trade market, that when you're talking about moving picks out to bring players in, he felt like they were better off retaining those picks because they had guys in Grand Rapids that could fill the roles that they were looking at to trade for at the deadline. And they asked him about Bear Grin, and he specifically said, like, Bear Grin's, you know, one of those guys that they're going to be going to. They He confirmed that there will be a call-up for the game against Vegas because Pagnota said that the Red Wings were going to recall Bear Grin. Obviously, it did not happen today, uh, because the a you have got to there's a it's AHL deadline too where yeah. you have got to have a player on the roster of an AHL team by 3 p.m. today the t- same time as the trade deadline from the qualify for the playoffs in the AHL so they likely held off recalling Berggren for this game so that he could play in the playoffs if need be for the Grand Rapids Griffins so that way you have that flexibility that if the Red Wings do get eliminated you send him to Grand Rapids for that playoff stuff. So that's why he'll probably get recalled tomorrow uh, or later today even, and he'll play against the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. So, but I agree, like this is, this opens up a permanent roster spot for uh, Jonathan Berggren on the Detroit Red Wings, who, you know, played 67 games last season. 
And it just, it, it, it's a one, it's really nice to see because he deserves to be up at the NHL level. He still has problems playing defense, but he's been tearing it up with the Grand Rapids Griffins. He deserves to be an NHL player. He is an NHL player. So it's good to see. And like you said, with the art question, right? If he plays four more games, he'll have to then pass through waivers to go down to Grand Rapids. But Eisenman said, like, that's not going to hold Bergen back. If Bergen's ready to play in the NHL level, they're going to let him play. And that if, Yannick and Bergen. So this kind of contradicts what I just said a minute ago about sending him down. But if Bergen uh, plays four more games, he Eisenman said that he knows that Bergen wouldn't make it past waivers. So right. I I agree with you that this is basically paving the way for Yannick and Bergen to come to the NHL. I would be shocked if after trading away Clean Costin, you use that roster spot to call up Zarnik or Luff. Uh, and I'd be shocked if Pagnota's report and Pagnota's hit or miss, and I've said it before, but th that one was so pointed and so specific. I'd be shocked if that one was wrong, especially given the roster moves that we saw on the deadline today. Yeah, no, I obviously I agree. Yeah. Uh, we're going to head to segment three and when we return, we'll preview the two games we got for you this weekend. So stay tuned to lockdown Red Wings. Got to talk to you guys today about indeed. No matter how the last game went and any time you take the field, you've got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in the same place. And Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have job requirements or else you don't pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites, Hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. Find great talent through the time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Start hiring today with a $75 sponsored drop job credit to upgrade your job at Indeed.com slash lockdown. Offer valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed.com slash lockdown to claim that $75 sponsored job credit. Terms and conditions apply. You need indeed or need to hire. You need indeed. Got it backwards. Indeed you do. <laughs> Segment three, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are going to talk first about the Arizona Coyotes and then the Golden Knights for you guys. Arizona Coyotes you're gonna, are going to be playing here in just a few short hours. Uh, the Red, They traded away Jason Zucker and Matt Dumba, and they are a really bad hockey team. So there's not really any excuse to not snapping your losing streak against the Arizona Coyotes. If I'm going to be blatantly obvious, uh, blatantly honest. Yeah, no, I agree. I think, uh, I, I, I think they ought to win. I think it would be a really <laughs> tough look to, uh, a, a, you know, after today, people are already some people, not everyone, not trying to generalize the whole fan base into one opinion, but um, there, there's certainly a, a group of the fan base out there. That's already kind of, upset that there weren't more wasn't more activity and they, they weren't buying and um i think going out there and, and losing to one of the worst teams in hockey would probably not be a way to uh to end trade deadline day so i i think they they'd better win but i they they should they have two wins in the last 18 games and had a 14 game losing streak that they recently snapped against the ottawa senators yeah. so i mean this is they're playing at a college barn. They're a really bad hockey team by design. They just sold at the deadline. Like this is a team that the Red Wings. There will be more Red Wings fans there than Yotes fans. The Red Wings should and the Red Wings should be pissed off, right? Like you just got embarrassed by the Avalanche, and now that that window, not the window, but the distance between you and the Islanders is shrunk down to two points. Like this is a must-have two points against the Coyotes. You cannot afford to go into Arizona and lose this hockey game. Like. I could go do the whole thing like, oh, their their shot attempt share, their power play, their penalty kill, the guys on their team who have points. None of that matters. None of that matters. This is the Arizona Coyotes, and while I don't mean to sound disrespectful, they are intentionally a bad team. Yeah, on purpose. On purpose. And the Red Wings are intentionally trying to make the playoffs. Right. So there's not an excuse to losing to this hockey team, especially yeah. after they got rid of Jason Zucker and Matt Dumba, who you know, say what you will about their skill as hockey players. They're everyday players on this Arizona Coyotes team. So there's yeah, no this reason that was already really bad and just sold. So, yeah. so, and the Red Wings are, they stood pat. It's the same roster. So 
There's no excuse losing the Arizona Coyotes, and I really hope for a positive result tonight because I will be very salty all weekend if they do lose, especially when, oh, and it's the second half of a back-to-back for the Coyotes too. Let's make note of that as well. So if they're tired, you're pissed off, and they sold at the deadline. There's no excuse. There's and no excuse. you play Vegas on Saturday, so you better get the insurance win and beat Arizona then beat the team in front of you so that uh, no no matter what happens, not trying to be negative, but no matter what happens on Saturday, win or lost, you still are walking out of there with two points on the weekend. Now, obviously, because of the fact that Kaleem Costin was traded and Dylan Larkin's hurt, the Red Wings only have 11 active forwards on the roster right now because they're, even if they had recalled Deontay Berger, and I highly doubt there was, he was going to make it all the way to Arizona and be ready to play uh, by 9 o'clock tonight. So... He, uh, they're running 11 and seven. That was already confirmed by Helene St. James on Twitter. Uh, and Alex Lyon is starting and they already confirmed that Reimer starting tomorrow in Vegas, which I find very interesting. Uh, I think, you know, you mentioned something about this in a back-to-back earlier in the season where do you start your better goalie against the easier team to help ensure you get the two points you should get and then start your backup against the game that might've been a toss up anyways, or do you go with your you know, the better goalie against a tougher team to try and boost those odds. Age old question. In this situation, they're going right back to Alex Lyon, who just got shelled for five goals. I'm not blaming him because the Red Wings did not show up to play in that game. I I think I saw that episode. It was one of the best five goals against in two periods performances I've ever seen from a goalie. Right. (laughs) Uh, So uh, they're going right back to him against the Arizona Coyotes, trying to ensure they snap the losing streak. And I think it's smart. In this instance, I think it's smart. Like you've lost three straight. You need to make sure you get back in the win column. So play your best hand against the team that you should beat. And then Reimer, I mean, for what it's worth, Reimer hasn't been bad lately. So. He hasn't been bad lately. So I know his last outing wasn't the best outing in the world, but you know, in the last stretch of five or six games that he's played, he's been much improved. So hopefully he can give so us a nine Oh six. Yeah. I mean, if you can give us a serviceable performance on the second half of a back to back in Vegas, you know, who knows? And speaking of Vegas, I mean, this is a team that's, I hate them, but I, I respect the hell out of them. Like people call it, whole LTIR thing, right? Like people ask whether or not it's cheating. It's not cheating, right? They're taking full advantage of the CBA. Like this is legal within the CBA. I think in the future they should close this loophole, but as it stands right now, the, what they're doing is completely illegal. And they added a bunch of depth at the uh, deadline, getting Noah Hannafin, the, the prize of the deadline, right? Uh, then they also added Anthony Manta, who has been having a really strong season. Obviously, it's a disappointment. A lot of Washington fans will say his tenure was a bummer because he wasn't the he wasn't the power forward we thought he was going to be, and he wasn't the power forward they were hoping he was going to be either. But he's been a very nice uh, forward throughout his tenure and this season, especially for the Capitals. So it was a nice add for depth there in the uh, in the forward core. And then Thomas Hurdle, of course, who obviously won't play because he's still hurt, but he is expected to return at some point this season. So. Uh, Vegas Golden Knights team that's trying to get back in the division conversation. They're fourth in the Pacific, 73 points, two points behind the LA Kings who are holding on to the third spot. Yeah, that's a really, really good hockey team. On the flip side of our conversation with uh, talking about the Yotes, um, yeah, Vegas is obviously one of the best teams in the sport and just had a incredible deadline when it comes to uh, bringing players in. So that'll be a nightcap, 10 p.m., out there on the West Coast. So, um, but yeah, man, that's one of, uh, we talk about, he actually mentioned the Knights a little bit at one point uh, in the presser, Eiserman did too, just talking about their depth. And that's what separates them from everybody else. They're uh, they're the deepest team in the league. And yeah, you're, you're going to go face them without your captain. So Godspeed. But uh, all in all, Scotty, I thought as far as that deadline goes, it went as expected based on what we were talking about last month before, you know, we got closer to the deadline. It, they either were going to stand pat or soft by. They, they they decided to stand pat. That's okay. Like I said, the only wrinkle is I just, with the prices that people were going for, I almost like, could they have? But when you're looking at the long-term outlet outlook, rather, I don't disagree with it. Yeah, I, I, I would have. I would have honestly much preferred bringing in someone. Uh, I, I think, yeah, I, I don't think this deadline is like a disappointment or anything, right? I don't think this is like blasphemy and that it's awful. Um, my preference still would have been to to go out and, and bring at least someone in uh, for a push. I mean, if, if you're going to reiterate the point that the goal for the Detroit Red Wings in 2024 is to make the postseason, I think that 
that should be, uh, you know, that, that would have been a little bit, uh, bringing somebody in would have helped that certainly uh, a little bit more than just standing pat, but obviously they have internal additions that they're going to make. And, um, yeah, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't love it, but I, I do understand the, uh, the, the balancing act that goes on between, you know, what do you want to give up as far as long-term assets go to, to bring in, uh, you know, shorter term help. And that's, a it's a very, very difficult balancing act that, uh, that Iserman and the front office have been tasked with. So, yeah, I guess I'll stop rambling, but it just, you know, not uh, not my favorite outcome in the world, but um, certainly not, again, not a huge disappointment. And and I, you know, it's not a not a sign that the Wings won't make the playoffs and can't make the playoffs, et cetera. So. Absolutely. Uh, Scott, do you have any final thoughts before we send the people to the Red Wings game in just a couple hours? Because we're doing a middle of the day, like we're recording for, in the middle of the day for actually the day that it is. That's really rare for us. That is. Yeah, we don't <laughs> usually uh, don't usually do that, but um, I don't think so, man. We ball. We do ball. We're back with a new episode on Monday, recapping the games against the Arizona Coyotes and the Vegas Golden Knights. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Same time, same place. It's your team every day. Every day. 